Eagle Prime, the current world champion battle mech, is on eBay right now. Bidding starts at $1, and there's no reserve. I've got a link to the auction in the description, and if it's already sold, I'll be making another video about that shortly. So if you want to get notified when that happens, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now, some of you are stumbling across this for the very first time. Some of you have been following Megabots for years now. So the purpose of this video is twofold. One is to explain to people what they're bidding on and answer some questions that prospective buyers might have. Two is to explain to our millions of fans what happened. Now, I want to be clear, this is the end of Megabots in its current form. And if you want to understand what happened, you should watch this video all the way to the end. Eagle Prime is likely the world's most combat-capable battle mech. This 15-ton robot is powered by a Corvette engine and seats two pilots. It measures about 11 and a half feet tall when sitting down and 16 feet tall when standing up. Eagle Prime is actuated by common off-the-shelf hydraulics. If you've worked on cars, tractors, or other heavy equipment before, you'll be a natural at servicing this beast. Its software runs on an open source Java code base written by IHMC, a nonprofit robotics lab in Florida. Realistically, if you have some programming or robotics shops, you'll be able to make minor tweaks, but you'll probably want to pay IHMC a little bit to consult you through the process of making bigger changes. Now, for transparency, I want to make sure you know about all the little things you'll have to deal with. Considering how complex this prototype is, they're really not too bad. First, when we built this robot, these tracks had rubber pads like most modern tanks do. Let's just say the robot ended up being a little bit heavier than we initially anticipated. After a few turns on concrete, we realized the rubber wore down way too fast, so we replaced them with these really high-density plastic pads. Now, after a couple years of wear, these are also worn down and will have to be replaced soon. We'll include the CAD files, but you'll have to either machine them yourself or find a supplier to sell them to you. Second, these treads don't tend to handle soft terrain like dirt and sand that well because they dig down instead of scrubbing along the top when turning. Now, you'll be able to go forward and backward just fine over these ground types, but only expect to be able to turn over hard surfaces like concrete and asphalt. Third, Eagle Prime has a lot of hydraulic hoses and connectors, and over the course of normal operation, it'll sometimes spring a hydraulic leak every four to eight hours. Now, we've always been able to fix these leaks with a normal set of wrenches and a replacement O-ring, so I'll make sure to include a bunch. So besides the tracks and the hydraulics needing some regular maintenance and mostly being limited to hard surfaces, she'll do what you need her to do. The robot comes with this shipping container full of spare parts like extra radiator fans, filters, fuses, cables, and connectors. It also comes with a whole slew of weapon attachments that can be swapped onto the robot with just a forklift in 30 minutes of time. They include a left arm claw attachment, which is a mirrored duplicate of the robot's current right arm. A giant drill attachment, which threw shrapnel everywhere and turned out to be so dangerous, we only used once. You should never use this, but you'll probably ignore that advice. A set of 500 pound steel knives. Why would you need these? I don't know, why would you need any of this? A six inch double barreled pneumatic cannon. This may or may not work because we used it as a battering ram in the fight against Japan. Speaking of repairs and modifications, the winning bidder will also receive Eagle Prime's CAD files and source code. Now, let's get to the numbers. If you're bidding on this robot in hopes of making a financial return, here's what you're going to need to know. Our robots usually command anywhere from $7,000 for an at-home show in our back parking lot, all the way up to $150,000 for a big corporate client at a trade show or a music festival. If you want to transport it domestically, costs are anywhere from $4,000 to $35,000 round trip, depending on destination. It drives onto the back of a double drop trailer and is chained down to the deck for transport. We'll include some ramps to facilitate this. So as you can see, if you have your own truck to haul it, you can probably make a living doing private events. Just make sure you budget around $2,500 in fuel maintenance repairs for each appearance. Things break on this robot and you'll have to change the oil every now and then. 
The buyer is responsible for paying shipping, but I'm happy to help arrange or personally deliver as needed. The robot will ship from Oakland, California. So for US domestic West Coast buyers, anticipate maybe $4,000 for shipping costs. And for East Coast buyers, maybe $17,000. Um, expect shipping to take maybe one to two weeks. For international delivery, safe numbers are about $50,000 and two months for the robot to arrive at its destination. Happy bidding. Again, when the robot sells, I'll be making a video about who it's being sold to and what it'll be used for. You don't wanna miss that. So if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe and hit the bell. And if you're watching this on Facebook or IGTV, make sure to enable post notifications. All right, on to part two. Okay, we're out of money again. I have not been able to make this profitable. Um, we took out a loan about two years ago and we're not able to pay the interest payments on it anymore. And so we're selling off the assets of the company to pay back the bank as much as possible before we file the final bankruptcy paperwork. Uh, over the last year and a half, we did book paid appearances. Um, we sold rides, we sold some merchandise, but ultimately it just was not enough to make the interest payments on the loan, um, pay for the rent uh, here in this warehouse, pay for you know, health insurance, a salary for me, um, repairs and maintenance on the robots, um, and stuff like that. So um, there's sort of fixed costs associated with just keeping the robots around and we're not making enough money to pay for those fixed costs. That doesn't mean it can't be done. It just means that I was not able to do it. It's entirely possible that whoever wins this auction um, has enough business skills to take this and run with it and turn it into the crazy awesome thing that it deserves to be. Um, and honestly, I would love to see that happen, even if it's not me um, taking it to that point. Um, I'm totally happy to pass the torch, um, or maybe it goes to a private collector and, um, I don't know, gets donated to a museum or just becomes part of someone's private collection. and. Um, as long as it avoids going into a junkyard or dumpster, I'll be happy. The recent USA versus Canada challenge video fell pretty flat and that's why I'm not pursuing that. In the first two weeks, it got about 25,000 views, um, whereas the USA versus Japan challenge video got around 5 million in the same time period. And so I think that is a pretty clear sign that there's n no longer an appetite um, or like a mass market appetite for nation on nation giant robot fights. And I know there's always this loud minority of people who comment on all Megabot stuff and they say, the fight sucked, you scammed us, it was terrible, we hate you. And uh, first of all, I just like, I don't understand why you're still here or like why you do that. Like, what are you gaining out of that? we got farther than anyone else in history ever has. And also I think it's really short-sighted to assume that the first try at anything is as good as it will ever get. Think about how many rockets SpaceX blew up before they could land them reliably. And now they're this icon of the achievement of human ingenuity. But at first they wasted a bunch of money and blew up a bunch of rockets. So imagine if they had listened to the haters. The reality is when a reporter sticks a microphone in your face, you're speaking to a large audience and they ask, what's this fight gonna be like? You don't really have the option of saying, well, don't get your hopes up too much. It's the first time we're doing this. We don't really know what it's gonna look like. So just keep your expectations low. You kind of have one chance to hype it up and build the audience. Um, and so you need to sort of seize that opportunity. Otherwise it's just sort of lost in time. So I think we did the right thing with that, even though we didn't actually know what it would look like. And I know a lot of you have ideas about what could be better and, you know, believe me, I also have a lot of things I would have done differently if I could do it all over again. 
Um, I encourage you to pursue those ideas. Don't let me letting this go be the thing that stops you from pursuing uh, the change you want to see in the world. I really do think somebody's gonna figure out this giant robots as live entertainment thing. The concept clearly excites people, but I don't know if it will be more of a traveling circus thing or a WWE thing, or if it will be a, the true, you know, technological combat sport. Um, all I know is the first iteration we attempted didn't really catch. Um, but I do think there's a lot of potential in this concept. Iron Glory, our older robots in Japan right now, it's on tour until about March 2020. It may get sold to somebody in Japan, but I'll deal with that later as I'm not paying to store it anywhere, so it's not uh, a thing that I have to address right away. I do want to answer a few questions that I get asked all the time because this might be my last chance to do so. The first question is, why don't you take the robot to Burning Man? Uh, the robot doesn't turn that well in dirt and sand, uh, but other than that, I would be open to that kind of opportunity as long as we got paid to do it. It wasn't something I was actively pursuing because I don't think subsisting off of uh, art grants um, is a way to build a long-term uh, scalable business. I was more focused on the revenue streams that I think might be able to scale a little bit better. But yeah, it would, it, would cost, uh, it would cost a little bit of money to bring it out there and bring it back and repair it and clean it and all that kind of stuff. And we just didn't get the opportunity to do so. So um, that's why we didn't do it. Second question is, does the military want this or could you sell this to the military? I know this is a big buzzkill, but I don't think there's anybody at the military who's like, yo, so tanks, but really top heavy and wobbly and also slower and less reliable and easier to hit with an RPG. It's gonna be dope. A tank is gonna beat these robots 10 times out of 10. These are not built to actually be effective tools of destruction. They're built to be really, really entertaining and super fun to pilot and super awesome to look at. And I think we've achieved that, but they're really not as destructive as a tank. Not even close. That said, I do think that there could be technologies that would be developed in a giant robot sports league that could be reapplied to other industries like defense and material handling and mining and oil and gas and construction. I just don't think that the actual Megabots platforms are anywhere close to being useful for those applications right now. The third question is, why don't you put the robot in a movie? So if I was gonna make a movie about giant robots, say a Transformers movie, I would not make it a giant commercial for someone else's company and their giant robot. I would want to make sure that I own the intellectual property um, and the image rights of whatever characters I create in my movie's universe um, so that I can sell the toys and the merchandise and all that kind of stuff. So those were by far the three most common questions I got over the last five years of my life. And I'm so glad I was able to make a video online that I can just point people to now um, and get it off my chest. So, what's next? Let's all pop some popcorn and see what happens with this auction. Again, uh, enable notifications, otherwise you may not see the video I make of whoever is buying this and the transfer of this robot. Um, I really have no idea what's going to happen.